see you are uh, sitting away from me so it's uh, imperative that i must introduce myself i teach uh, a structure of materials phase transformation and microstructural evolution in the department of metallurgical engineering of iit bhu currently i am located in a area which is a very very prestigious area of the department of the institute as a whole this is about national electron microscopy although the project is over but through the hard and dedicated work of the research student and the faculty members we are able to attract funding through fest and therefore both the microscope that i am going to demonstrate today not the working principle but rather what it can do for you i am going to be telling you with the help of slide projection and others i have some small recognition if you want to know that i am a fellow of electron microscope society of india i am going to be um, the vice, vice president of electron microscope society of india i have already been awarded the material research society of india medal i am a fellow of uh, asia pacific academy of materials i am also a fellow of indian institute of metal that's my humble introduction i am sure in the country there are people who are far more well accomplished to talk to you about electron microscopy so friend i welcome you to the first part of my lecture and we shall be showing you the equipment and this equipment is known as scanning electron microscope this is a fig source previously we were having lab 6 source so there are many sources this is what it means and what this source is this is source of electron so any equipment will have a probe and the probe is electron in this case and how are you generating through electron gun so there is a source of electron that i have told you fake fake source or lapsic source now the electron is trying to come we want to accelerate it and how are you going to accelerate by applying a, a positive voltage because electron is a negatively charged particle so in case i have somewhere a positive voltage then what the electrons are going to do is that it will be moving away from the electron source let it move once it is starts moving we would like to make it through some condenser lens recall these lenses are not the usual glass lenses for example this is not this this is not a ceramic glass as you are dealing with electrons so you are going to have electromagnetic lenses so if any lens that i am going to talk to you either for scanning electron microscope or transmission electron microscope i am going to talk to you about the electromagnetic lenses only so let's get back to scanning electron microscope again it has got a electron source you can see it right on the top of the equipment it has got a condenser lens then a highly collimated beam depending on the size of the area that you want to scan it falls on the specimen so this is specimen because of the interaction of electrons with the specimen what it is going to do is that it will give rise to varieties of electrons these electrons are going to be the characteristic feature for example it could be secondary electron it could be back scattered electron here and all of them have got a specific application and these specific specific application will permit you to know the surface feature normally in metallurgy and material science we call it as microstructure so from the microstructure you can also try to understand what is the chemistry of it remember you can have the bulk chemistry by any other chemical analysis route but electron microscope permits you to 
no chemical analysis at a very, very small length scale. What is meaning of length scale? By length scale we mean a feature that you see that you cannot be able to see through your eye. So, you require some, some kind of some kind of magnification. So, one of the quiz that we are going to play at the end of my lecture will be how do you get magnification in this scanning electron microscope. So, I will not discuss it. There is no magnifying lenses in a scanning electron microscope. When I go to the other microscope that is transmission electron microscope, there I, I am going to tell that you can magnify it. So, the question is that how do you magnify it? Until you magnify, you cannot see the feature that are very small in nature. Your eye, our eyes, any healthy eye is going to see one tenth of a millimeter. If the object is placed, the image is placed before you at a distance of 25 millimeter. Sorry, I stand corrected 25 centimeter. So, you try to magnify it, but magnification is not resolution. This also I shall clarify when I formally give you the introduction of the electron particle and the wave. So, the, with this kind of introduction, now I shall be taking the opportunity to demonstrate how do you place the specimen. So, placing the specimen, the first step will be that you must know what kind of specimen holder you have. What kind of specimen you can really investigate? To be more precise, the quanta effect that we have it can analyze in principle all kinds of specimen. This was not true for the lab 6. If the electron source was lab 6, I would have asked you that no, I cannot handle any non-conducting specimen. But here, be it non-conducting or conducting, we do not have difficulty. Fortunately, we are blessed with the environmental mode also. So, we will be able to handle even the polymer specimen as well. So, let me let me try to make you understand what kind of specimen you must have. A specimen is very, very simple. There is a specimen stage over that on some conducting tape you can place your specimen that I am going to demonstrate it to you physically as well. So, for example, if you if you try to see it, if you try to see it, see see the black one, this is a carbon tape, right? And, and below this, beneath this, we call it as a stub. And on the top of it, on the top of it, as you are able to see, see th this black guy is no longer visible here. This black guy is no longer visible here. So, this is your specimen and this specimen is placed over it. I have already told you this is conducting tape. So, on this conducting tape you have placed your specimen. Look at, it is a totally shiny surface. Normally for metals, whenever you prepare the specimen, it will be a totally shiny surface. So, now you are able to see that if in case you give me a specimen of 1 centimeter square with a thickness of 5 to 6 millimeter, we will not have any difficulty in conducting this ex experiment. So, if you like now, I am going to demonstrate it to you, how do you place the specimen inside this instrument. So, as I have told you, now this is, this is the specimen that I have shown you already, then one by one you have to place it on this specimen mounting stage. So, as you are able to see it that I have 6 slot on the periphery and the 7th one is right in the middle of it. So, 7 specimen you can have it together. So, the question is that you must be getting confused that which specimen is what? How do I know it? Absolutely no problem, because in the interior of it, there is a camera. You can, you can see it, if, if you can 
The moment I am doing it like this, you are able to see that on the screen it is happening like this. What does it mean that there is camera? Therefore, I can also concentrate either on this or this on this. So, once you see it, what you can find is that you have the seven slot already made here. So, one by one, you can keep observing it. And after observation, what can you do? Normally, what we do is that, as I have explained you, that we try to see it, the surface feature of each of these specimen. And what kind of surface feature we see? You see surface features that are not visible to your eye. Normally, in metallurgy and material science, we call it microstructure. That is going to be very, very helpful even for geosciences colleague. Geo technical um, formations, the rock formation and all, it throws some light on it. So, at, at those length scale, you will be able to see the not only the microstructural feature, but the chemistry of it also. As I have told you that it has got the capability to do the microanalysis. On the back of this equipment, you will be having an edX detector. Another important feature in geosciences that we have is related to that, uh, that what kind of texture it has. As you know, that in geosciences, mostly my colleagues are dealing with solidification texture basically. So, those solidification texture analysis you will be able to know. Apart from this, because of the high pressure and the temperature variation in geosciences, lot of phase transformation takes place. So, those texture, phase transformation texture also you will be able to see. This is the specimen stage for placing sample for EBSD. That means, in case you want to understand the micro texture, you, you are supposed to be fixing your sample in between this, a well polished. Remember that the Policing of this sample for EBSD texture studies is very, very crucial and we cannot afford to compromise. Otherwise, your whole effort of using such a wonderful equipment will go in vain. So, we need to be careful. So, slot you are able to see it. So, what you do is that this has to be taken out and it has to be placed inside. So, this is what are you able to see some edX re written there? So, this is the edX detector. So, it gives you the chemical analysis at a microscopic length scale. Normally, chemical analysis will not give you this. So, you can see the feature from where those chemistry is coming. This is of enormous help for understanding phase transformation. Second part that I have told you that you can have the texture measurement at, a, at, all, at all level, length scales. So, behind this, there is a EBSD detector. EBSD. This EBSD detector will be able to see back scattered diffraction and record it and since the diffraction is coming from different region. So, the orientation of the crystal from one place to the other, you will be able to see it. While the presentation will be given to you, that time I am going to tell you how the two features, the two grains that are misoriented with respect to each other are different. You can color it. Now, you have the lot of software driven system, so you will be able to do it. So, to conclude therefore, this is scanning electron microscope. I have told you that it has one microstructure, second chemical analysis, third one solidification texture, micro texture, deformation texture, everything you will be able to see it with this help of this machine. Not only it is, it is for material scientists, metallurgists, but also for the geoscientists, it is of enormous help. Welcome to the 
second part of the model. Now, I am going to demonstrate to you a transmission electron microscope. The model is Technae G2 from FEI. As I have told you that all electron microscope or for that matter any microscope will have a source. Here again the source is electron, but this electron is accelerated at 200 kilo volt. So, there is a source of electron as I have told you here we do not have the phase tip rather we are working with LAB 6 because the maintenance of the fake TV is very, very costly. In the other room, in the previous model, in the scanning electron microscope, it was fake tip. So, please have the distinction. Here it is the lab 6, there we had fake tip in the scanning electron microscope. You can go in the similar manner, for example, right on the top you have a electron gun, then you have a condenser system and from that condenser system a collimated beam is coming. There is a goniometer and there is a specimen holder over which you will be placing your sample. Your sample has to be very, very thin. How thin is the thin? 500 nanometer that is the thickness of the specimen that you have to prepare. Otherwise, you will not be able to see it in the transmission mode. Remember in the in the scanning electron microscope, we were trying to see it from the surface, but here you are not only observing the surface, but you are penetrating inside in the transmitted mode. So, what is the advantage? Because you have spent enormous amount of time in preparation of the specimen. So, advantage is that you will be able to see diffraction pattern, a feature that is not possible in a scanning electron microscope in usual mode. Here all transmission electron microscope will have the two feature without any difficulty. It you will be able to see the microstructure, you will be able to see the electron diffraction, you will be able to see the chemical analysis as well. But you can ask as I have told you that you can investigate the surface also. For investigating the surface you require a stem detector, a scanning transmission electron microscope detector and that detector also we have known as the head of detector for example. But today we are not going to discuss all the attributes of, of this transmission electron microscope. As you are able to see that you can have the image, you can have the diffraction pattern as well as you can have the chemistry of a, any given material. There is a microstructure and followed by all the elemental map. Remember even in the scanning electron microscope, you have seen the edX signal. Here also you are seeing the same with a difference that the observation you can reduce it to 1 nanometer, 2 nanometer and 3 nanometer unlike the case of the scanning electron microscope. With the better version people can claim that they can really have the atom to atom resolution. We also sometimes do claim that we are able to resolve the atom to atom distance which is essential for crystallography. So, if you like I can take you to, to, to the specimen for example. What was the thickness of the specimen that I have told you? 50 nanometer and what was the area that I have told you? 3 millimeter disc that means the diameter of the disc is 3 millimeter. Now, I would like to demonstrate with the help of the design of the of the TM holder with a specimen stage that why we require a 3 millimeter. So, for that we will be showing you. There are many variants of specimen preparation technique. Today I am going to demonstrate only two. 
one of them right away here, another I shall be explaining with the help of slide. So, now you see that uh, if you are having powder and in case you want to see it, then the following steps have to be followed. A, you try to disperse it in a suitable organic medium and then sonicate it. After sonicating, you can put a drop on the grid. In case you are able to see the grid, I will be very happy. These are these are my grids. You see, these are these are my grids. Okay? You can lift it and finally, place it over here. Are you able to see that there is some edge, a small hole like where there are two from the one lead is from the top, another is from the bottom and you can place it and finally, lock it. This is requires lot of practice until you have it, please do not venture to do that. And this is the specimen holder and this specimen holder can be inserted inside the electron transmission electron microscope through the side entry and that is the side entry that I have shown you and I shall be showing you again. So, one drop you can disperse it over here and try to dry it for, for 24 hours in a desiccator for example and after that you lift this and place it here and once you have placed it here the dried specimen the powder particle can be seen with the help of transmission electron microscope. In many of the situation what happens is that you are having a bulky specimen. Then you can polish it, cut it and then try to have a 3 millimeter disc diameter. Normally we call it a diameter. So, basically 3 millimeter diameter disc you can cut it and then finally try to thin it down. And the thinning down means as I have told you from the millimeter you have to go to micrometer and from micrometer you have to go to nanometer. If you are able to get 50 nanometer thin specimen then at 200 kilo volt of the accelerating voltage you will be able to transmit your electron beam through and through and this is the requirement of transmission electron microscopy in one of the modes and this is very, very crucial that we prepare the specimen without any artifact. I must tell you that more sophisticated the machine is, you should not be thinking only of the signal, it is the noise. Normally, we call it in the parlance of scientific parlance, technical term that you should have to take care of the artifact. So, those artifacts must be removed. So, the sample preparation is very, very crucial.